Okay, let's dive in. Imagine, right? You've spent decades on this huge, complicated puzzle, a cosmic jigsaw. Mm -hmm. You've got the picture on the box lid. You know what it's supposed to look yeah, like. The standard picture. Exactly. Then you get this amazing new magnifying glass, super powerful. And what you see through it just turns everything upside down, your whole understanding of the puzzle. Yeah, that's pretty much where we are in cosmology. All because of the James Webb Space Telescope. It sent back what some people are actually calling a cosmic wrench. Cosmic wrench, I like that. Yeah, it's really shaking up the story we tell about how the universe began and evolved. You know, the Big Bang model. That standard story, um, Lambda CDM, is that the scientific name? That's the one. Lambda for okay. dark energy, sure. CDM for cold dark matter. It's been, well, the foundation for decades. Okay. The universe born 13.8 billion years ago from this incredibly hot, dense point. Yeah. Then expanding, cooling. But not like an explosion, right? I always picture that wrong. Not really, no. Think of it more like uh, maybe a loaf of raisin bread rising, well. you know, in the oven. Okay, I can picture that. The dough is space itself and it's expanding. And the raisins. The galaxies. Exactly. They're just being carried further apart as the whole thing grows. And in that story, the standard one, matter clumps together really slowly, like over hundreds of millions of years. That's the idea. Slowly. I you get the first stars, these absolute monsters called population three stars, maybe 100, 200 million years after the Big Bang. Big, hot, short lives. Very short lives. They burn bright, die young, and kind of seed the universe with the first heavy elements. And then from that, we expected to see these little messy uh, infant galaxies. Proto-galaxies. Small, chaotic things. Yes, yeah, small, misshapen. And the idea was they'd gradually merge over billions of years to make the big spirals and ellipticals we see around us today. So the Webb Telescope, JWST, it was built specifically to see that, wasn't it? To confirm that cosmic dawn story. That was absolutely the plan. It was designed to peer back, find those first faint flickers right where our models said they should be. The ultimate confirmation. Hey. Instead, uh, well, what it found has sent astronomers scrambling. It's been quite something to watch. Yeah, absolutely. It found... Well, things that seem impossible. Galaxies that look too big, too old, too mature for how early we're seeing them. They just formed way too fast, according to the old timeline. Exactly. So today, we're going to really dig into these, these cosmic curveballs. Explore the debate they've sparked. Is the story broken? Or just, you know, missing a few chapters. But to really get why these discoveries are so um, jarring, you kind of need to picture the universe even earlier what astronomers call the cosmic dark ages. Okay, dark ages, before the first stars lit up. Precisely. Yeah. For about 380,000 years after the Big Bang, it was quiet, mm -hmm. dark, simple. Just this fog of neutral hydrogen gas everywhere. No stars, nothing. So empty and waiting. Pretty much, yeah. And the Lambda CDM model, our standard story, predicted that gravity, with a helping hand from dark matter, would start this very slow, very patient process, pulling wow. gas together. Like building with Lego, you mentioned that analogy. Yeah, like building a huge Lego castle, but one tiny brick at a time. A bottom-up process. Very gradual. So we should be seeing those tiny bricks, those chaotic little proto-galaxies, not finished castles. That was the expectation. Small, messy beginnings. And Webb, with its huge gold mirror, it's perfect for catching that incredibly faint light from way back then. Light that's been stretched out, red shift. The right red shift, like a siren sound changing as it moves away. Light does that too, stretching to redder colors. Exactly that. The further away something is, the faster it's moving away from us due to cosmic expansion, and the more its light gets stretched or red shifted. Higher red shift means looking further back in time, to the very early universe. Okay. So Webb looks back. And within weeks, literally weeks of turning on, the data starts coming in. And it was, as one scientist put it, deeply unsettling. Because instead of Lego bricks. It found fully built castles, maybe even skyscrapers, to stretch the analogy. Huge structured things in an era just 300 to 500 million years after the Big Bang. Astronomers started calling them monsters almost right away. Monsters, wow. And it wasn't just one or two, was it? I remember reading about these surveys, like jades. Right, the JWST Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey. And they found these things they nicknamed universe breakers. That term alone tells you something. It really does. Galaxies seen when the universe was only, what, 500 to 700 million years old, but looking like they had as many stars as our own Milky Way today like a hundred billion suns worth of mass. It's staggering. You hear these stories, maybe slightly exaggerated, maybe not, of astronomers nearly spitting out their coffee when they saw the initial data. I can believe it. That feeling of, wait, this, 
this can't be right. And the hits kept coming. Take Jade A's GSZ-140, confirmed early 2025, we're seeing it less than 300 million years after the Big Bang. Incredibly bright. Okay, less than 300 million years, that's really pushing it back. It is, and the crucial thing, they analyzed its light and found oxygen, a significant amount. Oxygen, but oxygen isn't made in the Big Bang itself, is it? No, absolutely not. It's forged inside massive stars. Those stars have to live, then die, often in supernovae, to spread that oxygen out into space. So finding oxygen that early means? It means generations of stars must have already lived and died in less than 300 million years. It's just <laughs> way faster than we thought possible. It's like uh, the analogy you used, finding a fully baked cake minutes after planting the wheat. That's a perfect way to put it. It implies star formation and evolution was happening at a breakneck speed we hadn't accounted for. Okay, so either the stars lived and died much faster or something else is going on. It forces us to reconsider everything about that early period. And then there was another one, Mom Z14, confirmed May 2025. Right, I remember that one. Light from just 280 million years after the Big Bang. Again, bafflingly bright. And the analysis suggested it wasn't bright because of a supermassive black hole gobbling stuff up, which can happen. No, then why? It seems it was just a sheer number of young stars all forming furiously, mm -hmm. an incredible burst of star birth. Totally. So, okay, our timeline says first simple huts, maybe, and Webb finds skyscrapers with the lights on. That's the paradox. That's not just a minor adjustment. That feels like a fundamental problem with the blueprints. It must be causing chaos in the cosmology world. It's definitely ignited a fierce debate, one of the biggest in a generation, people are saying, and you basically have, you know, two main camps forming. And just to be clear, this is science working, right? Not science failing. Oh, absolutely. This is exactly how science progresses. You build your best instrument, it shows you something unexpected, and that forces you to question your assumptions, refine your models, maybe even overhaul them. It's pushing us. Okay, so camp one, the revolutionaries. The revolutionaries, yeah. yeah. They look at this JWSU data and say, look, the standard model, Lambda CDM, it just doesn't work for the early universe. Because it predicts slow bottom-up growth. Exactly. And these massive mature galaxies showing up so early directly contradicts that core idea of galaxies starting small and growing big over billions of years. Now, there was some confusion early on, wasn't there? People thinking these galaxies were older than the Big Bang. Yeah, there was a misinterpretation, sometimes maybe sensationalized. It's really important to stress, that's not what the data shows. Okay. Their redshift, how much their light is stretched, clearly places them after the Big Bang hundreds of millions of years after. The issue isn't the Big Bang itself happening. It's the timing after the Big Bang, the sequence of events. Precisely. How do things get so big so fast? Now, within this revolutionary camp, you also have people pushing alternative theories, like modified Newtonian dynamics or MOND. Uh, MOND. That's the idea that we don't need dark matter. Gravity just works differently on large scales. Sort of, yeah. It suggests gravity is stronger at very low accelerations than Newton or Einstein predicted. Hmm. Proponents argue MLND actually predicted that large structures could form more quickly without needing all that invisible dark matter to get things going. Interesting. Okay, so that's one side. What about the other camp? The defenders of the standard model. That's where most cosmologists still are, the consensus view. They're saying, whoa, okay, these findings are really shocking, definitely surprising. But not fatal but not fatal to the whole Big Bang framework. They argue Lambda CDM still explains so much else about the universe. The cosmic microwave background, the large-scale structure, the abundance of light elements. But these aren't universe breakers. They're assumption breakers. Yeah. That's the term some are using. The problem isn't the whole model. It's maybe some of the, uh, the fine print details about how physics worked in the extreme conditions of the very early universe. Things we just haven't understood properly yet. Exactly. So this camp is now scrambling, basically, trying to figure out which fundamental processes we got wrong. Was star formation wildly different? Did gas cool and collapse much faster? Or oh, okay. maybe something else gave galaxy formation a massive kickstart. Yeah. Like... Primordial black holes. Primordial black holes. We'll definitely come back to those. So if the standard Big Bang model is going to survive this, it needs some serious tweaks, right? Some patches to explain these early giants. Definitely needs some adjusting, yeah. What are the leading ideas for how the universe could build these things so fast, but still within that Big Bang picture? Well, one big idea is what they're calling hyper-efficient star formation. Hyper-efficient. Think about it. Mm -hmm. The early universe was much denser than today. 
and it was made of almost pure, pristine hydrogen and helium, the raw fuel for stars. None of the heavier elements messing things up yet. Right, so some new models are suggesting that under those unique conditions, maybe gas didn't just slowly clump together. Maybe it could collapse directly into huge star-forming regions incredibly quickly. So less like laying bricks one by one. And more like, I don't know, 3D printing entire walls or even rooms all at once. Just a much faster, more direct route to forming lots of stars. That would certainly speed things up. Okay, what else? Another possibility involves feedback. Usually, when massive stars form, their intense radiation and winds blow away the surrounding gas, which kind of shuts down more star formation nearby. That's negative feedback. Right, it limits the process. But maybe, just maybe, in the very early universe, in that dense, dark environment, it worked the other way. Maybe the energy from the first massive stars actually triggered more collapse and more star formation around them. Positive feedback, like one match lighting a whole box. Kind of like that, yeah. Like the heat from one burning tree, instead of clearing space, instantly causes all the nearby trees to ignite too. It could create a runaway chain reaction of star birth. Wow, okay. That's a completely different dynamic. It is. And then you have, as you mentioned, the primordial black holes idea. Yeah, this one always sounds like pure sci-fi to me. Black holes from the beginning. It's a really fascinating and actually quite old idea that's getting a fresh look. Yeah. We usually think black holes form when giant stars die and collapse, right? Mm -hmm. Stello black holes. But the theory goes, what if in the first second after the Big Bang, when the universe was incredibly dense and lumpy, some of those dense patches collapsed directly into black holes, completely skipping the star phase? Okay. So tiny black holes just popping into existence right at the start. Ah, they could range in size, but yes. And if they existed, scattered through the early universe, they would act like, well, like gravitational seeds. Seeds. Or cosmic magnets. They have strong gravity, pulling in the surrounding hydrogen and helium gas much faster than gravity could do on its own. They basically jumpstart the process of galaxy formation. Ah, so the black hole comes first and the galaxy forms around it. That's the compelling part. It flips the script. Maybe the galaxy didn't form the central black hole. Maybe the primordial black hole form the galaxy. And that would naturally explain why these early galaxies are so massive and seem mature because they had this head start. It could potentially explain both the size and the apparent maturity quite neatly, yes. It's a very active area of research right now. Okay, so those are ways to potentially save the standard model. But you said the sheer weirdness of the JWST results has also brought some more out there ideas back to the table. It definitely has. Because the findings are so surprising, it's cracked the door open again for theories that have been on the fringes for a long time. We should be clear, these are still highly speculative. Not mainstream yet. Not mainstream. Lack strong observational backing compared to Lambda CDM. But they highlight just how fundamental the questions are that Webb has thrown at us. So, like, what what kind of radical ideas are we talking about? Well, one is the big bounce. The big bounce, instead of a single Big Bang beginning. Yeah, the idea is that our Big Bang wasn't the beginning, but maybe just a transition point in an endless cycle. Yeah. Imagine the universe expanding, then contracting back down, bouncing, and re-expanding, like a cosmic lung, breathing in and out over maybe trillions of years. Okay. And how does that help with the web galaxies? Well, if the universe has cycled through bounces before... Maybe these huge, mature-looking galaxies aren't brand new. Maybe they're actually relics or mm. structures that somehow survived the bounce from a previous cosmic era. Whoa, so they'd be like ancient leftovers from a prior universe. That's right. really mind-bending. It is pretty wild, yeah. Then you have things like plasma cosmology. Plasma cosmology. What's the core idea there? It fundamentally disagrees with the gravity-dominated view. It argues that electromagnetic forces electricity and magnetism played a much bigger, maybe even dominant role in shaping cosmic structures, especially early on. So giant cosmic electrical currents and magnetic fields shaping galaxies instead of just gravity and dark matter. That's the gist of it. Proponents claim this can explain complex structures like galaxies and filaments without needing dark matter. It's a very different view of the cosmos. And any others? Is there a simpler but still radical well, there's a straightforward, though still quite radical, proposal by some physicists that maybe the universe is just older than we think. Older? How much older? One prominent recent proposal suggested it might be nearly twice as old, maybe closer to 26.7 billion years. 
instead of the standard 13.8 billion. Doubling the age of the universe. That would certainly give galaxies more time to form. It would solve the time problem quite directly, yes. Yeah. But it creates other problems with fitting data, like the cosmic microwave background. So it's highly debated. Right. So these are all definitely fringe ideas, but they're in the mix now because the standard picture is under such pressure from the web data. Exactly. It just shows how fundamentally web is forcing us to re-examine everything we thought we knew about those first billion years. We have to consider possibilities we might have dismissed before. Okay, so let's circle back then. Our starting question. Are there galaxies older than the Big Bang? And the answer is still a clear no. The redshift data confirms they formed after the Big Bang. But the reality is almost stranger, isn't it? It's far more interesting. We found galaxies that are, you could say, far too old for their cosmic time. Mm -hmm. Structures that grew up way too fast, challenging our whole understanding of the pace of cosmic evolution. These impossible galaxies, they've revealed that the early universe wasn't this quiet, slow-building nursery we imagined. Not at all. It seems it was more like a frantic factory, churning out massive structures with incredible, unforeseen speed and efficiency. And like you said, this isn't science failing, it's the opposite. It's arguably science's greatest triumph. Yeah. We dared to build a machine powerful enough to potentially break our most established theories. And it did. Or at least it's forcing a major rewrite. So Webb hasn't broken the universe itself. No, it's shattered our perhaps complacent understanding of the universe. It's replaced a simple, maybe too simple story with a deep, complex, and frankly thrilling mystery. And the exciting part is we're just at the beginning of figuring this mystery out. Absolutely. JWST is still relatively new. More data is pouring in constantly. The detective work is just getting started. So if you, listening, thought the universe had this neat, tidy origin story, well, surprise, it looks like there might have been some pretty wild prequel episodes that we're only just starting to glimpse. And figuring those out invites us to rethink cosmic time, how things form, maybe even fundamental physics. It really leaves you wondering just how much more is out there in the universe's secret history waiting to be discovered.